Hello and welcome back to the channel for another College CF review. Today we'll be taking a look at the Transformers Legacy Evolution Comic Universe Bludgeon. This is a pretty new character and awesome to see it make it into the main line. I got mine over from All Time Toy Store. Check out the link in the description below to get yours. So yeah, let's get right into this review. This is a, of course, redeco and slight retool of the Legacy Evolution Tarn, which unfortunately still haven't managed to get my hands on that one, as that is a very popular figure. But Nonetheless, this is a very cool one as well, very cool repaint, and I'm liking this one quite a lot. So there is the cover art there on the front, some very cool artwork of him slicing and dicing on the side there, and some artwork on the back as well, showing the Evo Fusion gimmick, which I probably won't even go over because it's just combining the guns together, and there is the Legacy Evolution artwork on the side for the Decepticons. You do, of course, get instructions. This guy's transformation is very straightforward, uh, pretty well, I won't say very, but it's pretty straightforward. It isn't too difficult um, at all. Pretty simple. Once you do it once, you'll probably get the hang of it. So here he is. And yeah, he's looking pretty sick. You can already see that he is very poseable and comes with, I really like that sword accessory. Uh, Tarn did not come with that accessory. So this guy comes with everything Tarn came with, plus the sword, I believe. So very cool. You can see that head sculpt there looks fantastic. Nice screaming face with the orange. And it doesn't actually have light piping, but the way they've sculpted it, it reflects light very well. Looks very good. And you can see that transparent orange glowing effect going all the way down this guy. Lots of silver in there. Decepticon symbol. Again, very interesting paint scheme on this guy. The orange and the red and the green. It's, uh, it looks pretty brutal. That's for sure. And this mold is definitely one that's focused on the robot mode, so he's very clean uh, from all aspects. And of course, you can remove this gun section on the back, which personally, I actually probably won't use it very much when I'm displaying this guy or messing around with him. It's a little annoying to have this on the back, but he is pretty, pretty sweet. So since we have the accessories, let's just go over them. Of course, he does come with his sword, which is molded in red plastic and painted with a silver blade. Looks really cool. And there are several ways you can store it. So of course you can hold it in either hand. And as you can see, because of the articulation that we'll get into, he can easily hold it um, with both hands. You could also, if you want to use either of these two ports, you do have um, this port here. So you could plug that in in either of those spots, or you can come to the back. You could plug it on the top of his cannons here. Or if you don't want his cannons on his back, of course you can use that port um, the cannons are on. And personally, this is my preferred look for him is to have the sword plugged in back there. I think that looks really cool. Much more samurai-esque. It's too bad there isn't like a port on his leg. That would have been awesome if you could just have that on the side and then you could actually have all the accessories stored and not just stacked on top of each other. But still very cool. And of course, as you see, you get this whole gun assembly, which is actually three parts. So each gun can be removed and there are five millimeter ports all over them. So you're gonna plug, plug them into his arms or up on his shoulders, whatever you wanna do um, there. And there are two different ports you can use. You can either use the top one, which I just usually use this back one, or you can use the front one if you want. And one cool thing you can do is you can put those parts down as if you were transforming him into his alt mode. Then you come to this section, rotate this around, and you can plug the cannons all the way up. Sorry, rotate this around like that. And you can take the cannons and plug them all the way up top like that if you want to and have shoulder cannon look going on up there so i think that's also a pretty neat look to have for this figure give him some big shoulder cannons looks pretty cool but of course we'll need this for tank mode so just get it back the way it was and it doesn't matter it doesn't really matter which way you have the guns just notice that this side they, they are asymmetric um, just notice that this side has this piece on the top so you want that always facing up so that way you have that free rotation on the bottom. But so that is, you can do that with this thing. And then you can also just take the whole assembly and plug it anywhere you want as well. So definitely a lot of options for how you want this guy to look. But he is pretty, pretty sweet. So articulation wise, you can look down a little bit. You can look up a decent amount. You can tilt side to side very well. And he can turn to about there and at the full 360, but you don't need him to do that. So very good. Then you do get full 360 rotation out of the shoulders there. Let me put these things back up. And everything also on this guy is Blast Effect compatible. So I, be I believe, actually no, these cannons might not be Blast Effect compatible. I would have to check that. 
Let's see, it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a five millimeter port. So they should be, they should be blast effect compatible. I don't unfortunately have any with me right now to test, but they should be blast effect compatible. I'm pretty confident these are blast effect compatible on the top. So there is that as well. Um, so yeah, the shoulders go all the way around. You can get up to there. So very good. A little bit of an awkward joint, um, but it, it works, I guess it works. Then out of the elbow, you do have that elbow rotation there instead of a bicep rotation because of how he's designed. But then for transformation, you also have this inwards joint, which is really useful for getting him holding the sword with two hands. You can also rotate here at the elbow. I already showed that, sorry. <laughs> you can go back actually a good bit that way for transformation. You can get a little over 90 degrees of bend out of the elbow. Then you get full wrist rotation and you get opening and closing hands, which are fantastic. And he has some really creepy looking fingers there. So that is it for the upper body. You do also get full race rotation, just goes to there, it just stops. Um, but yeah, this part is just hitting the back, but like you don't need any more than that, it's plenty. You can high kick to there, you can kick back even further. You can kick out to the side to there. And as you can see the hip, the skirt pieces move with it. So you don't have to worry about moving those. You can get over 90 degrees out of the knee. And if you use the transformation joint, you can actually just get him kicking himself all the way in the butt. So that's pretty cool. And out of the ankle, you do get backwards, forwards, plus rocker. So very articulated. And of course you do have the, the, the thigh rotation up there too as well. So it definitely has all the articulation you could possibly want, I would say, I mean, other than maybe an ab crunch, but he honestly doesn't need it. And the scale, it works really well. Definitely a very good looking figure. He has normal Voyager size. I'm not gonna do any comparisons for this guy as I don't have the Legacy Tarn. So let's just get straight into transformation. So to begin with, take these pieces, Hold them down and then just detach this from the back it's just tabbed on by two pieces it's on a double hinge joint so you want to separate it and rotate it around and just keep it out of the way like so then you want to take the head and this part's a little tricky because of the crest on his head um you do just want to try and wedge it past in here just give it a little push it's more of a problem when you're transforming him the other way but not honestly it's not really a problem at all and then what you want to do is start bringing this piece up it won't go any further yet because we have to work on the shoulders so shoulders, you want to rotate all the way up, make sure it's all straight, but rotate all the way up. And then we're just going to pull out here. They're on slider joints and then begin rotating them backwards like so. And you can only rotate them once the slider is extended. So that's why you have to do that. Now what will happen is we want this peg to go into this orange piece, which you'll, the easiest way I found to line it up is you want this one, this, this tab on the top facing upwards. So you want that facing upwards and then it should just tab in like no problem like that. And there's the front of the tank. And then we can just continue rotating these pieces all the way around and they should just sit flush like that. And then we can take this piece and it has a little peg on the back. I am a little bit, I don't like that this is transparent plastic. I mean, the effect is cool, but I'm not a big fan that it's transparent plastic with this tiny little three millimeter port, but that, or tab, but that does go into the three millimeter port on his booty there. So give that a nice squeeze. And this should cover his face. That's how you kind of know everything's right. So this piece should cover his face and that should not be visible. And come to the legs, just take the feet and straighten them out like that. And go ahead and combine the legs. I also find it easier now to break at that knee joint. So just below the knee, there is a secondary joint, which you use for transformation, or of course you want to get him himself Get him kicking himself in the butt, you could also use that. So, there you go. And just break it like so. Then you want to come to the arms and we want to open up these tabs, these uh, green panels, and also rotate the arms around. And these green panels should face upwards and this slot, sorry, there we go. This slot should line up with this tab on the inside. And so to do that, you can see the way the elbow is cut in the back, it should create that kind of 45 degree angle there. And then you'll use that other joint I showed earlier also to create that 45 degree angle. And you can tab it in now, but there's no reason really to. Before you do anything else, you wanna rotate that fist around, it's just easier to do now. And then we can come to the tank tread here on the side, open that up and then detach it from the shoulder. And then this will just, just give it a squeeze. It'll just slot right in like that. And then there's a tab slot connection that happens on the underside of this tread piece. And that will secure the forearm. 
And then we'll just use that tab slot connection on the inside of the form and it'll secure everything nice and snug. And you just want to line it up so that everything's looking nice and straight on the side. And of course, we do the same thing on the other side. So again, rotate the arm 180, rotate the wrist 180, then open up the screen panel and rotate the arm back again so you can see that 45 degree angle. Then drop this section down also at roughly 45 degrees. Open up this panel, the side of what was his shoulder. Then take that whole tread section and collapse it over top of the forearm there. It's really just clearing a few panels. Sometimes it is easier if you just, you know, get it as lined up as if it were going to be tabbed in as possible. Of course now it's fighting me for whatever reason. There we go. Tab it right in and then close that up. And there's almost there. We're almost there. Last step is just to collapse these feet down. And so there are two slots, one on each foot that go into these tabs right here and just collapse everything down and they should tab right in. And that's of course the main robot all transformed. Now we can bring in, you also want to make sure that they grasp over these green parts on each side. So there we go. Get everything nice and straightened up like that. Looks pretty good. So now final steps here. We can bring in the accessories. The camera, go. So we can take the cannons and you want it in this arrangement. So that way this port's facing forward, these tabs are in back and you have the slope facing forward as well. And again, make sure that this cannon, you'll know it's on the on the correct side. Actually, it is the right side. Um, it, it's, it'll, it, this little piece will be facing upwards. And so I just want to tab that in on top of the legs. There's two tabs on the back there. To lock everything in, it holds nice and secure. And there you have those cannons. And then if you want to store the sword, you can, of course, use any of the numerous ports on the sky. The instructions recommend that you use this one back here. And there you go. There is Bludgeon in his alt mode. Definitely a little weird looking, but it is based on Tarn, and there isn't really a set alt mode, I don't think, really, for, for comic universe. Bludgeon, not a big... Um, I don't know very much about the, the comic, so maybe there is a better alt mode. This one's kind of weird, in my opinion. It just looks weird. There's no wheels or anything, so it doesn't actually roll. It just slides. Um, it looks cool, but it's also just kind of weird. But I believe everything on this guy is Blast Effect compatible. So these are Blast Effect compatible. These are Blast Effect compatible. Again, I'm not confident about that, so don't quote me. But I believe that everything is Blast Effect compatible. So if you want to use that, you certainly can. Of course, articulation-wise, in tank mode, nothing new. You can rotate these things all the way around, just like you could in robot mode. And you can also angle them a little bit if you want to. And then of course, there's always the Evo Fusion gimmick, which I, I said I was not gonna really show because it doesn't matter, but you can just take these cannons and plug them onto the back of the other and have a bigger cannon. If you wanna do that, you can use that in this mode if you want, just plug it on top, whatever. But there you go. There is Legacy Universe Bludgeon. I definitely like this figure. I think he's unique and cool. Honestly, though, this alt mode is a little underwhelming and his transformation is, it's fine. It's just not that enjoyable, but it's not hard. Um, yeah, I think he's cool, but it's more of a niche character. It's more like, do you want to... I just wanted this guy because he had a sword and it looked cool. <laughs> so it's it's really, if you are into this character in particular, um, whether it be from like Robots of Disguise or whatever universe you you like, um, or you just think he's cool, then definitely worth the pickup. I think he's pretty he's a pretty neat figure. But otherwise, if you have no connection to this figure, I don't see why you'd pick it up. It's a you know very random repaint otherwise. But I think it's really cool that Hasbro is diving into these more unique figures, so I definitely like it. Again, you can check out the link in the description to get yours from All Time Toy Store, and thank you so much for watching. Please leave a like and subscribe if you enjoyed this video, and I'll see you in the next video. Thank you so much for watching.